This video tutorial will highlight some of the delicate parts of preserved flowers and offer suggestions for working with your specimens. The milkweed flower is the smallest of the specimens in the investigation. It is very delicate and may be difficult to remove from its container intact. Do not be alarmed if you do not remove the specimen in one piece. Note that this flower contains bracts, or modified leaves that resemble petals. These structures at the base of the flower are not true petals, so be careful to exclude them from your petal count. The chrysanthemum is an example of a composite flower, meaning that a single fluorescence is made up of many tiny flowers. Here we have a chrysanthemum with the petals already removed. When you cut the flower in half, you can see some of the many stamen and the single pistil. The honeysuckle flower is one of the specimens where it may be difficult initially to identify the ovary. As you carefully peel away the petals, you will see the length of the pistil continue down into the receptacle. Note where the petals begin to widen around the pistil. This is where the style ends and the ovary begins. In contrast, the daylily has a more obvious ovary. Here we have a daylily with the petals and stamen already removed. Within this darker structure is the ovary, and cutting it in half lengthwise reveals the structures, including the ovule, inside. Here are some tips that will make reforming these dissections more manageable. Start by observing each specimen in its container. Carefully remove the label and set it aside. See if you can identify any of the required structures. Identifying a structure at this stage will make it easier to identify later, even if the flower or structure becomes damaged during the investigation. Be sure to replace the label before removing the label from another container. When removing a specimen from its container, let it dry on your dissecting tray by allowing the pad to soak up the excess preservation fluid. If the flower is large enough, you can gently adjust it to catch all the excess fluid or pat it dry. If patting, be careful not to damage the specimen. This same technique can be used to dry any dislodged structures removed from a container. Sometimes structures are dislodged from the specimen due to age or transit. In these cases, remove the main flower first, then carefully remove all the dislodged structures this may require you to drain most of the preservation fluid into a disposable cup and then pour out the structures onto your dissecting tray or paper towels. These structures can still be identified and counted for the investigation. Preserved flowers do not retain all the color or structural integrity of fresh flowers. This may make it difficult to identify a structure. As you work, Compare your specimens to the images of their living counterparts in the lab manual to help you identify the required structures to complete the investigation.